Welcome everyone. So happy to see you today. We're going to start very simply today. Um, and a lot of people need to just de-stress, including myself. So we're going to exhale down. Feel the opening at the belly and through the nose, through your nostrils, and exhale all the way through three Dan Tian's three energy centers. Your head is the third one. Your second one is the heart and lungs. And your primary energy center here is at the energy sea or ocean. And that's at your belly. So open your belly for the primary center of the energy sea and bring that energy up to the crown of the head, to your nostrils without with allowing your shoulders to move down when you finish. Inhale and then exhale. I love what some of you are doing. I can see you're slowly moving more than I am. <laughs> so that's great. You want to move that slowly. So this exhale really comes down through your whole body and you feel it on the inside until there's nothing left. And then when you inhale, it's expansion. And when you exhale, we call that contraction. These moves under the umbrella of Qigong go back at least 5,000 years. We don't know when they all began because there, was, there were no written records, although there were very many written records in China. They had their ways of putting things into a way that came down. But there was also a lot of work that came um, to us that is just simply tradition, families, that whole families that worked with the practice over generations and called it their own. So in honor of that, which also happened in India, you have generations of musicians in the same family, hundreds of years. And the tradition comes to the young, youngest kids, and they carry it forth when they grow up. So it's, it's fairly reliable that these are very old practices. One more of triple burner. You're inhaling and you're slowly exhaling, and the idea is to bring this into the body. It's called inner awareness. We'll come to the top now. We'll Bring the hands over the head again. Feel the shoulders release for a moment and then just lift them up. And you're going to exhale down. And inhale up through the center. This is the central meridian here. Pick up that energy. Turn the palms over. Send the energy up to the sky. And the movement itself is often called Buddha picks up the earth and sends the earth when the palms turn over into the uh, sky on the exhale. And one more. It looks beautiful. <laughs> Just really feel that we're all connecting to this energy together. It's really special moment for me. And now we're going to take the breath in here and just ground it through the earth. So if you are seated, some of you are, you can just bring your palms to your thighs. The next one we'll do will be to widen laterally the body through the rib cage. So you're going to start here with the fingers about a foot apart. But for women, we're, we have a little more space we need to create. So you're going to inhale out. Expanding like an accordion or instrument that makes a beautiful sound as you exhale. Inhale out again. Notice how we're really expanding the long time we can inhale and the long time we can exhale because it's so slow. And one more.
Beautiful. Now you're going to bring the palms down to the thighs again. Good. Now picking up a feather, thumb and forefinger, and extending through the rib cage and exhaling down with a flat palm. And watch it with your peripheral vision. Let your eyes roll up as it comes up there. And then you bring it down on the exhale. And again, the other side. Peripheral vision is something that we tend to forget about, but it's so important when you're driving or riding a bicycle, you need to be able to see over there and up without necessarily bringing your head up. So one more time, try it. Your eyes roll up, your eyes roll down with that movement. Very nice. Now we will do our head rolls. Either seated or standing, but right now I'm seated. It's your choice. You're going to bring your chin to your chest and roll your head towards your right shoulder, up and around. If you need to, you can, when, it, when the head comes back, you can lift your shoulders back here to hold that. But I think the way I like seated is you just bring your ear over to this shoulder and then think of an oval as you move around towards your right, up and back, keeping the shoulders down. Usually that works for me, but if you need to, you can raise them there. And then to the other side and back to the center. Once again, to your right shoulder. Feel the ear right over that shoulder. It's kind of more like not so much a circle as the sense of an oval because of the fact that you have to bring the ear over the shoulder. And then you bring the oval to the other side. So the ear over here is over that shoulder. And this occurs on the inhale over here. As you start, as you get to the top, you start exhaling to the other side. Come back to center. And now take the ear to the other's opposite side, which is going to be towards your left in your oval, hold on to possibly, if you have a stool, hold on to the back of it. And up and around. This is where you could have your shoulders raised if you need them. I'm not raising mine because I, I actually really work with this all the time. But today, anything that doesn't work for you, modify for your body. And one more of these. When you get back to center, lift the head to have it just parallel to the earth, taking your time to get there. And then first looking towards your right, bring your head over to the side so that it's now right above the shoulder there. And exhale back to center. This is all done very slowly. You have to have lots of patience. Now you're going to inhale to the opposite side, to your left, and back to center. And now if you do open your eyes, you can notice how you use your peripheral vision. As you move towards the right, you're probably seeing things in your room that you never realized were there or haven't thought about for a long time. And come back to center on the inhale. and to the other side. This causes us to really look, come back to center. Good, now raise your left arm, bring it over to your right thigh and start doing a twist that will be for a spinal twist towards that side from belly, rib cage, upper chest on the inhale and twist on the exhale here and look over to this light back of the room if that's comfortable for you. You're moving belly, rib cage, upper chest first. Keep a long spine. Extending the spine is number one, as well as breathing. And just breathe here before you move back. 
So this twist of the spine is said to help us with all the nerves that come off the spine as far as relaxation. So breathe into that twist, into the belly. And then slowly begin to move to the other side, lifting the other arm and bringing your right arm to the thigh there and twist towards your left. I'm sorry, that was the left arm for you. <laughs> you're, you're doing the twist on the opposite side now. So you start with the inhale through the belly, rib cage, upper chest as you twist, and then you make sure that your spine is really long. And then breathe into it. And look around your room that's back that way. We never really do look this way, but you might in the theater if you have a friend in back. Come back to center. Open the arms. Bring them up. Make sure you're grounding through the earth. You might want to tap the balls of the feet. You might want to tap the heels. And sink it down. Our next one are the shoulders. So bringing your fingers right inside the shoulders here and inhaling up, back and down. Shoulder rolls. We're warming up all the joints and these are all beautiful circles you can make. I always love the feeling of the shoulder blades rolling down the back when we do this. And that's on your exhale. The inhale comes when you take this breath in. The exhale is when the shoulders roll down the back. and Take it slow, feeling every bit of that beautiful circle with the fingers, the wrists, the shoulders, and the elbows moving together. And then take it opposite way. So back, up. Forward and down. And this is the beauty of Qigong. It's so slow. It's things we do in aerobic exercise, but when we do them this slowly, we really feel what it does. We feel it from the inside. Good. We'll let that one go. And we'll go the opposite way. Now you feel the chest cave in because you're going to come forward, up, back and down. And most of the time we want to have this nice opening of the chest. So whether you get it at the beginning or the end, it's really cool. Good. And our next one that we need to do after the shoulders is the arms. Big, long arms held by these shoulders here. We're not going to necessarily lift them up that high. It's going to be more like we're feeling how heavy those arms are, but we're not locking the elbows. So the energy is moving to the fingers. Can you feel it already? You feel it coming to the from the shoulders all the way down to those palms. And then the other way with your circles. And back to this way. Good. And then bringing the elbows close to the body, but not tight. The wrist of the circle, the wrist circle from the elbow down seeing how all those muscles help us with our wrists and the other way. But now isolating that by bringing the elbows close to the body and just circling forward with the wrists. So they're still using the muscles in the forearms, but we're just not so conscious of it. And then the opposite way, back, back and forward. It's still a circle. Sometimes you can actually watch the circle 
and then watch the circle the opposite way. Then you're really sure that you're making a circle and not just flapping. It's really interesting. Okay, let's do this um, use of the fingers. So you're going to spinal twist this way and take the fingers up. Sometimes called the air guitar because you it's like you're playing those frets <clears throat> and the strings. And once again, we've got a beautiful spinal twist this time, which is easier than the last time. Come back to center, sink it down, rest for a moment on your thighs, and take it from the other side. It's great to see you all today. Okay, and now we're going to just release. And our next things we'll need to stand up for because we get to the hips, and those are a little bit harder to do, the hips and knees seated. So hips are going to be forward, side, back, side. So one forward, two to your right, back, and th three to your left. One, two, three, three's back and four's to the left. Okay, and then feel the whole spine long with this. And you're in rider and horse position, so the feet are apart in a V. And your knees are slightly bent. But the spine itself is long. Good. Okay, now you're bending forward with a flat back from your hips, right? Now you're going to go the opposite direction. So let's go forward to your, which way, Mary? <laughs> that way. Okay, if it's forward, side, back, side. Good, and one more here. Yeah, that's really good for the connection between the hips and the low back. Let's shake it out now. Shaking it starts from the feet all the way up, through the knees, through the buttocks, through the mid midline here, and all the way up. Anything you want to do, shake it out. And this is all Qigong. Whew. All right, let's just do one last thing here. Bring the knees together and the feet. Move by um, bending forward from the hips. Take hold of the knees and send the circle to your right and around. Slowly holding those knees. Because normally they only act as a hinge forward and back. and the opposite direction. Oh, well, six is always about good for these. And then straightening the legs without locking the knees, come down, touch your ankles, and touch your toes if that's comfortable for you. We bent, we folded forward from the hips to do this. And then come all the way up, opening the hands out, opening the legs out into rider on horse position. And we're gonna come into the fountain now. So be careful, this is not for everyone. In the fountain, you're going to bend forward from the, forward from the hips here, and you're gonna have create space by then rounding the back, and you'll be able to touch the ground in front of your toes, essentially across this area. 
and come back up slowly and then do the same again. Okay. So you are the fountain here. This is a forward bend and you can go halfway if you like. Inhale and fold forward and release your fountain and come back up slowly. Open for the fountain, look up. The water releases, you can bring the backs of the palms together and drop on the exhale. Inhale, open, backs of the hands, water comes down, inhale back up. And open. Open to the sun, open to this beautiful day we have now in California. And bring the palms back here to prayer. We're going to do, this is for all those who have friends who need a prayer today. Inhale, bring your palms into prayer. Exhale down through the central meridian. Expand on your inhale. On your giving here and then exhaling through the meridian with your prayer. And one more. And release, coming into mountain pose. Learn to stand like a, a mountain and breathe from within, bringing your tailbone in towards the body. You'll need that when we Anytime we sink and rise also. So being able to use this area, your core is going to be important today and all the time. Inhale, lengthen through the spine. Feel the back of the skull as if it's lifted by a string and the feet into the ground. And just breathe here. Bring your tongue to your upper palate right by your front top teeth and let it rest there with a slight inner smile as you breathe. The idea of all meditation, including this moving meditation we're about to do of Tai Chi Chi, is moving from the heart, breathing from the low Dan Tian and feeling the full length of the spine as you move and as you just stand still in the mountain. Palms are facing forward, chest is open, tailbone is tucked in, and you're ready to go. Rocking motion, our first of 19 moves for Tai Chi Chi. Sinking and rising. The heels lift a little bit, coming back. The toes lift, but not the balls of the feet. It's an isolated sinking and rising, sinking in the center and then rising. Sinking in the center again and then rising with the toes only. Here, it's just a little bit of the lift of the heels and back. And feel the full, full foot in the middle. You're standing on top of the bubbling spring or well. And enjoying that right in the center there. Stand and then let go. Like it's glued to that. Unglue it. Feel the forward back nature of this. And now add your figure eight infinity symbol. Common now with both Western medicine and coming from Eastern medicine. A shared symbol that our health is the most important thing. Diet, exercise, fresh air, lengthen the spine. Rocking motion celebrates that.
Feel the breath, the expansion here, the inhale, the contraction towards the Ming Men or that tailbone that's tucked in there. Feel that connection, expansion, contraction, and expansion as you come forward, contraction as you start back. The contraction is at the belly. Feel your abdominals connecting to that exhale. And breathe softly at the same time through the nostrils. <laughs> it's a beautiful kind of breathing that Qigong does. That breath you're doing will connect to your feet and give you more of a feeling of what's happening down there as you move through all these numerous meridians that start there. Sink down here in the middle just a little bit and then feel a little bit of the rising as you come back. A little bit of the rising as you come forward. And last one. Sink it into the earth. Your palms are resting on globes of energy right now. Enjoy it. They're in resistance to gravity. And then bring the heels closer together. Feet are still in a V. Inhale here to lengthen the spine. Bird flaps its wings. Our second warm up. Bringing your weight forward to the balls of the feet and releasing the heels on your exhale. On the third one of each of the group of three, one wrist circle forward, one simple wrist circle. And inhale back. Second cycle. Everything is slow, connected rhythmically. And moving from our centers. Cultivating the chi. Third one. A bird flaps its wings. Return to inhale and exhale, grounding it through the earth. And we'll double ground it this time, bringing the energy to the heart, turning the palms over and exhaling slowly down to the earth again, honoring the earth. And shifting to our right side to bring the left forward for our third move around the platter in chest high water. Your back foot's 45 degree angle to your front. Feel the sense of the weight moving over this left foot and then back towards your right where the knee bends. You also bend in front, but when that happens, the back leg straightens. So feel that yin yang effect. Here's the yin leg in front, the yin leg in back, it's straight. Here's the yin leg in back, the yin leg in front, it's straight. Let's try moving towards me on the inhale and away from me on your exhale. Good, that brings us all together. And you glide through the center. Some of you are standing so tall now. This is great to see. I'll have to rival that. <laughs> Not rival it, but emulate it.
Last one. Bring that leg back, sink the energy through the earth on the inhale and then the exhale. And shift towards your left side this time to bring your right heel forward. Straight leg in front, around the platter. Coming towards me and then going back. Good, we've got a great weight shift thing going. Feel the inhale here. Through the nostrils, tongue's automatically going to the palate at this point. Feel your inner smile. Remembering it's the joy of movement, so have fun with it. Three more. Last one. Draw the foot in. When you reach the right leg, you've, you're ready to double ground because we finished that particular move. And now we move on to a new move Preparing for a round the platter variation, we shift towards your right leg. Bring the palms up to the midline here, right at the sternum, and your left leg comes forward. You're gonna pick up a ball of energy at your left shoulder, inhale it here and draw it to the center, and then at the center you start exhaling back towards your right leg. Feel that slow inhale, that slow drop of the fingers and your circle as we you move forward towards me and then you move away from me, good. And the rhythm of it all is so beautiful as we shift this energy from one hemisphere of the brain to the other at the same time. You'll actually feel the nostril on this side where the leg is wanting to inhale, and the other one wanting to exhale. It's connecting both hemispheres. Last one. And draw that foot back in. Sink it through the earth. Shift it towards your left. Release your right heel, straight leg. Back leg's bent, yawn leg, yin leg in front. And now you're gonna change that front leg to be yawn and the back leg to be in and keep that change going through this whole nine times. As you pick up this ball of energy on your inhale, sink it in the center straight across in your circle and feel it in your breath at the nostrils. Last one on your right side of around the platter variation. Sink it into the earth by double grounding it this time because we just finished another move. And now we prepare for bass strum, shifting right to bring the left forward Release that left heel and moving slowly, 
and circle yourself with this drum. It's energy moving around you in a circle, a big oval, the size of the biggest drum. And yes, when you inhale up here and exhale back, you'll be actually sending energy towards your brain. <laughs> then the elbows move back with the hips, encircling you with that chi. Feel it come through your body. Feel the soft inhale at your nostrils. And also feel your belly opening at the same time. It's fascinating. And that all that energy is moving into your feet as you move back here. Take it with you. And last one on your left side. It's a slow nine on each side. Inhale and sink it through the earth. Shift towards your left and prepare that right leg by just dropping the heel forward and the leg is straight without locking the knee. And move through bass drum, surrounded by that energy. The back foot's 45 degree angle. And once you begin to feel this all the time, you can tell that when the leg is too far out or the leg is too short, and you start to just be able to change it. You're feeling it from within then. That's a really important step. Last one. On your right, a bass drum. Bring the foot in your right foot and sink it through the earth, double ground it. Also feel the sinking and rising in this double grounding, right? The knees sort of let go a little bit. Let's do a triple ground. Feel the lengthening here. And here's the sinking. Bring the tailbone in. Good. All right, good. Our fourth double moves, our daughter on the mountaintop, daughter in the valley. So take a moment to just make sure that you're comfortable in your body, shake a little bit. And now we're gonna shift towards your right side to bring the left forward. And the palms will come right out because you're coming, you're at the bottom of the hill here. And you're gonna go up the daughter will go up the mountain and come down through the center of it with the wrists crossing straight down. The fingertips are up as you make this cross here. And then you open out to inhale. It's more expensive than I thought. I was just reading about this move today from 1974. And uh, the idea of bringing cutting down through the center is keeping the fingertips up because you're cutting down through the central meridian. So try that with that left hand crossing behind the wrist of the other one. Yes, and now expand the palms out. Embracing that expansion and then really feeling this contraction of the belly.
it just changes the movements a little bit when you learn something new and or think about it. It's just um I thought about it today and I thought, wow, that's really cool. It's so much more expansive that way because you feel the cutting of two circles in the middle and then this expansion out of the breath on the inhale. That's ex exhaling there. And this is your inhale. Good. Let's bring that leg back down here to the where it belongs in your rider on horse position. Sink it through the earth once. Shift the energy towards your left foot, releasing your right heel. Daughter on the mountaintop. And feel free to alter your shift. I got too far, far away on that leg, so I just brought it in. Breathe forward towards me and then breathe out on the way back. It's gliding through the center. One more. The noble number of nine in Chinese numerology is honored in this practice. Inhale and sink it through the earth. And double ground it. Now the companion to daughter on the mountaintop is daughter in the valley. This time the palms start right up here. Your left heel comes forward. Back foot needs to be 45 degrees to that front foot, which is right out from the hip. And come through the center of the valley on the inhale here. Cultivating the chi without touching the palms, but they're very close. In the inhale here. And the exhale over the mountains on either side. And coming forward on your inhale and back on your exhale will draw you gliding through the center and gliding back to release the front toe, gliding forward to release the back heel ever so slightly, and then only the toes in front. simply affected by the fact that now the leg is yan in front, the back is yin, and now the leg is yin in front, and the back is yan. Depending on which leg holds is a substantial leg. Now the front leg is substantial, the back leg is insubstantial. Now the back leg is substantial, and the front leg is insubstantial as you move back. So feeling those differences, the yinning and the yawning, one more. And bring that left leg back. Sink it through the earth one time. Shift towards your left and prepare for daughter in the valley on your right side. Inhaling through the valley. And exhaling back. Two more. Mm -hmm. 
last one. Beautiful. Double ground it. Both daughters, daughter on the mountaintop and daughter in the valley have come to a graceful conclusion. And now we move to our next side to side move, carry the ball to the side. Bring your feet into a nice wide V here as you prepare, shifting over to this leg, your yan leg, releasing your yin leg, just the heel straight leg and starting to carry the ball to the opposite direction. From your right to the left, three times. Bring in the outside foot. Once you release here for the sinking, keep that position, bring the tailbone in and move the body with a long spine from the tailbone to the crown of the head. And then the third one, sink it into the earth and prepare to go back. Winding up towards your left, releasing your right heel and moving towards the right. Watch your tailbone, bring it in before you, when you ground here, okay? And because you're staying pretty low and move now with a long spine. Yes. Now, when you rise to inhale, you get a moment to rest. And let's go back the opposite way. Yeah, once we stop, and I'm just realizing something I hadn't said before, I think and you bring the foot in, there's almost three things you have to do. You wind up, you release the heel out, and before you send any weight over there, you breathe, and then you go. Beautiful, really nice. Okay, so that's carry the ball to the side. Our next also sort of companion moves are push-pull and pulling in the energy. So palms will be up. And uh, I was just reading about this today too. It is a circle. You're bringing the, th the um, palms, the heel of the hand down. And then you're not locking the elbows. And that brings the fingertips up. And then you turn the wrists around and bring the energy back on the inhale to the heart. So the push is an exhale, and the pull is when you start drawing back the leg, and this is the inhale. Okay, so we'll try to try that. Push, pull, left side. So this is circularity. Watch the back foot. Make sure it's forty-five degrees. Let the fingertips come up to center. And then as you start back to inhale, the energy comes back to your heart. This has also been called giving and receiving energy in Kapasitar. Beautiful. 
And feel the energy come towards your face on this circle that comes back to your heart. I was a little late that time. So it takes subtlety like this, you know, where you're feeling the fingers tips come up and then turning around to maintain that circle as it goes down again. It's really cultivating the chi because you have to focus the mind on this. And last one on this one, this is the exhale down. As the palms turn around now, this is the inhale back. Sink your left foot into the ground. Shift towards your left to bring the right forward. Palms are ready to go. Inhale first before you push. Giving and receiving energy back. The international movement that started in 1974 with some of these moves was called Kapasitar. And they took this internationally to populations that were in trouble. You can see why. It feels like giving and receiving energy. The gift comes back to the giver. And last one of push, pull, sinking it into the earth, double grounding it, bring it to your heart on the inhale, slow inhale, slow exhale, and then prepare for our next move, pulling in the energy from the farthest star in the universe by shifting subtly already into your right foot to bring the left foot forward. Palms are up this time. Pulling in the energy from the farthest star in the universe through the fingertips. Last one on this left side. Release the heel back. Inhale to sink it into the ground. Shifting towards your left, right heel comes forward. Fingertips are up as you pull in the most energy you can from that distant star for whatever you wish for today.
goodness, kindness, fairness, justice, whatever it is for you. Good health. Community. Last one. We'll ground a few times because we're going to now move to the taffies. We're going to take a break for water. But ground first. That was double grounding. Let's take it over the head to the stars and everything we just celebrated, back down. Resting on globes of energy. And then getting some water. <laughs> we'll continue with the taffies in a moment. Basic taffy. Your left hand will come under the right elbow. Your right hand will come right over this elbow. And you bring your left heel out. You're going to move to the left. And then to the right. Right hand will be underneath. It's your invite hand. And notice how far up that top hand is. It's right above the elbow. And then you have a long way to move through your taffy. And the hands keep switching what's on top. What's underneath is the invite hand. So it's saying, okay, we're going to your left. Now the other hand will be the right. It's coming. It's inviting you to the right. Other things to notice about the taffies here is as one hand moves down, it's supporting the back yin leg, straight leg. And the other hand moves up because the um, yan leg doesn't need that much support, so that hand moves to heaven. <laughs> so one's moving towards earth. That's the yan hand with the yin leg. One's moving towards heaven. That's the heavenly hand supporting the yawn leg. And the hand underneath moves up. The hand on top moves down. I always think that's so fun. So much like life, right? Basic taffy holds a lot in it. And the weight shift is making that taffy move. So feel it from within.
two more. Last one. Beautiful inhale to sink it through the earth. We'll double ground that one. It's going to be the basis of the next three variations of taffy. So starting from wherever your center is, you're going to bring your left hand underneath for, for anchor taffy and your right hand above the elbow here and bring your left heel forward. And this anchor is in the back foot, so it's your right leg connected to the earth and you don't move it until you get to the anchor being pulled in as you come over here to shore. Then you pull in your anchor And that leg will be the foot that comes forward now. Interchange of opposites. Forward. And to the side. bringing in the anchor. The anchor foot that was is now in the opposite foot. And last one of anchor taffy. Sink it into the earth. And double ground it. Circles taffy will be next. Sinking, rising. A little wrist circle on the third one as you first wind up towards your other side. Sinking, rising, releasing the heels. And then the third one, wind up, bring your left hand under and move towards the left. Inhale and sink. Sink, sink, a little bit of a wind up, and then pull. Last two. Bring in the tailbone, you move through there. <laughs> Connect at your energy C. Right there, connect, connect, connect. Good, and then inhale. And we'll ground this one. Double ground it. These are all highly energetic, even though there's slow moments, slow moments and fast move moments. Rhythmically, it's so interesting. 
Let's do another grounding. Beautiful. And our third variation is perpetual motion taffy with heel step. We're cautioned to not bring the heel too high, but it does come off the ground. And use your core here. Bring in that tailbone. Good. I can't see you do that, but I can feel that you are doing it. <laughs> so feeling is probably the most important thing about this Qigong-natured movement with Tai Chi, is that we feel it from within, and that's what affects us and gives us the, the Qi. And last one coming up. Perpetual motion taffy comes to a needed graceful conclusion. Take your time to make sure that you ground it before we move into our next moves beyond the taffy, which are going to be working the pulley So when you need it, just do extra groundings because it's important to let the body feel like it's let go. And those are powerful moves. Working the pulley on your left side, feet are out in a V, toes are going that direction. Feel that your knees could bend here. And if they did bend, they wouldn't go beyond the big toe. And you have your tailbone pulled in. Ground it. <clears throat> and we begin now with your left hand. The right hand will be underneath the hip bone here. It's right at the waist, but for me, it's going to be here. And then you're going to bring the left hand forward and the left foot, straight leg in front. And you're going to prepare to be able to cross the body here and then cross it the other way, but not too much. So shoulder to shoulder works pretty well. And often a shorter weight shift with this. And feel the circle, lots of circularity in all of the Qigong practices. This one related to Tai Chi, but feel the circle of it. You don't necessarily have to bring the arm that far up but the fingers probably go up there. Yeah, because it's going to swish across the face almost without touching it. And you're swiveling the foot possibly. I am. I swivel on my front heel and swivel on the back ball of the foot to make sure that I don't torque the knee. Last one on your left. Good. You brought the foot back in. You ground it singly, maybe doubly here, because this is pretty cool move, but slightly complicated. Bring your right heel forward, your left hand under the hip bone here, possibly. Your ready to go. Shoulder to shoulder on Zoom. As if we can touch each other's shoulder with a gentle touch. Maybe the way we would touch a baby's skin, except we're not really touching, but we are only through energy. Is energy real? 
If you feel it, it's real. Two more here. Last one. Beautiful. Bring the foot back. Ground it through the earth. When the palms turn up, they're inhaling towards the sky or heavens. When you turn them over, they're exhaling towards earth and moving the energy to the feet. Feel that one more time. Inhale, comes to the heart, goes up to the heavens. The exhale goes down towards the feet, ending at the low Dan Tien, but energetically moving down to the earth. And now we go to light at the top of the head light at the temple or temples preparing with your feet in a v to sink and rise light at the top of the head right at the crown inhaling here and sinking and rising Circling the palms, the fingertips stay up through this. Inhale. Sink and rise. The light on the top of the head will prepare to move out as you turn the palms over, sending them towards the earth in a circle that returns to the heart on the inhale with your left hand always on top. Sink it down through the central meridian on the exhale. Inhale out and coming to the temples, light at the temple, feet in a V of course, and sinking and rising without touching your head at all. Feel the energy across the the hemispheres of the brain already. Sink and rise. Circle the energy with the fingertips up. Hold it, feel it there outside your head. Sink and rise, light at the temples, letting it go. Out into a big circle that expands, bringing it back to your heart. and preparing for joyous breath. Feet in an open V here. Inhale the energy towards your heart. Turn the palms over, come up to the balls of your feet on the inhale here again and sink it out four times. <clears throat> Two more cycles of four. Inhale and then release. <clears throat> Big long inhale. And four exhales from that one inhale. <clears throat> mm -hmm. 
Inhale. And release. Double ground it. Passing clouds needs to start on this side. And your other hand is over here. Bring the feet out into a V. And as this hand moves down, the other hand will move to the other side, touching the elbow or close to it. Last one of passing clouds. Exhale through the earth. Inhale again to ground it, bring it into your heart and sinking it once more into the ground. Our next move is the six healing sounds. Ho, hu, su, sh, shi, tui. Your left foot, your left hand, and this is aspirated, so you won't hear any sound. But you're breathing through it. Right hand, right foot. Last one, five chewies. Don't forget your heel step. Here it is. Flex the wrist. Mixing the energy of yin and yang, yang and yin. <laughs> all the energies we work today, all with the opposites, bringing your left heel to your right ankle bone for cosmic consciousness pose. Inhale, big circle. Bring the palms close with your left hand, close to the heart, looking through the window of eternity and over it. Elbows even. Feeling the energy into the feet. Interlocking the fingers, draw the palms forward, honoring yourself for this practice. And then bringing the palms up for honoring over 5,000 years of Qigong. The work of Wen Shan Huang and Justin Stone leading up to 1974, Tai Chi Sha. As practitioners, we are grateful for this long history and to be together today. Thank you so much.